Hello, my loves. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Okay, let me share my screen with you. We're going to get right to work today. And let's get here. Perfect. So I want to get to that big screen. All right, we're going to match these objects with its correct name. So we've been learning about space for three weeks now. And I have a feeling that um, <clears throat> you're going to do very well on this if you haven't done this already. So match the object with its correct name. How many of these objects can you name? Hint, the man-made object pictured below is mentioned in the paper, but there's no picture of it. We bet you'll be able to figure it out. So they mentioned the man-made object before, and they, they didn't give us a picture of it, but you know what we did? We went ahead and we Googled it because we wanted to know what it looked like, right? So we didn't wait for them to give us the information. We went and found it ourselves. That's how smart we are. So let's take a look at um, our word bank. We've got the Whirlpool Galaxy, Vega Constellation, Andromeda Galaxy, Hubble Telescope, Lagoon Nebula, oh, that's awesome, and Orion Constellation. Now, some of these you guys have heard before. We've heard Andromeda Galaxy, and we definitely heard Hubble Telescope. We've heard the word nebula. Um, we know about the Whirlpool Galaxy. We saw some pictures of Whirlpool Galaxies before. Constellations might be a little bit new, but I'm hoping you learned about that in fourth grade. So let's take a look. We've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I have a couple choices. I could look at picture A and go and find the word that matches picture A, or I could go word by word, like Whirlpool Galaxy, and find the one that goes by Whirlpool Galaxy. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna choose the word because sometimes for me, knowing the name of something is going to help me find its picture. <clears throat> so. Whirlpool Galaxy, let's see. Is it gonna be A, B, C, D, E, or F? Whirlpool Galaxy. It could be A, A looks like a galaxy, D looks like a galaxy, and F looks like a galaxy. So which one of those looks like a Whirlpool Galaxy? Yeah, it's gonna be F, right? Because it's a Whirlpool. A Whirlpool, it swirls and whirls around. So F is that Whirlpool Galaxy. <clears throat> All right, we've got the Vega constellation. So let's look here. Well, I have two constellations. I have C and I have E. So, hmm, I don't know which one is the Vega constellation. Instead of guessing, I'm going to go back and look. Is there another constellation? Vega constellation, Andromeda galaxy, Hubble telescope, Lagoon Nebula, the Orion constellation. So I have two constellations, Vega <clears throat> and Orion. So I have C and E. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh look, there's Orion's belt? Or maybe actually if you've watched uh, Men in Black, awesome movie, and they talk about how, uh, how the, that, that little galaxy is on Orion's belt, and they said Orion's belt is just three stars. So there's no galaxy there. And it meant the, the cat's collar because the cat's name was Orion. Awesome movie if you haven't seen it. This right here, this is Orion's belt. So what, um, what people in ancient times thought, they thought this resembles Orion, who is, who is one of their gods. And this is his belt right across his waist. So we, you know, you got like his feet and you know, his shoulders. These are his shoulders over here. So that's Orion's belt, those three stars. That one would be Orion, which means this has to be Vega. That would be called here the Vega constellation. Now this constellation is not called Vega. Vega is the star. So they call it the Vega constellation because it's the constellation attached to that star. This is actually Lyra. It's actually like the golden harp. You know, it's like a, like a lyre. Have you ever heard? Not lyre, like pants on fire but it's pronounced either lyre or lyra. It's like a, or a lyra. Um, it's a harp. So that's what E is, it's a harp. It's the harp 
uh, constellation. But Vega is the name of the star in that constellation. Next, we've got Andromeda Galaxy. So which one's going to be Andromeda Galaxy? We know it's not F. Is it going to be A or D? Hmm. We have two choices here. A, a could be a galaxy and D could be a galaxy. I don't know. Let's look at those choices again. Andromeda Galaxy, Hubble Telescope, it's not going to be that. Lagoon Nebula. Oh, so we've got a galaxy and a nebula. <clears throat> Did that clear it up for you? Um, what letter is that? D is the galaxy, and then A would be the nebula. Because remember, nebula is, is, is the name for like, like dirt and gases and just like stuff. And usually it, it has like beautiful colors and, and you know, the gases are lit up by, uh, by radiation or by light, and things like that. And then that means what's left over is the Hubble telescope, which is right there, which is B. And we knew that because we saw it before. So because there was a little bit of confusion with that Vega, because they called it the Vega constellation, look what I did. I Googled Vega constellation. And here it is, Summer Triangle, Vega, and its constellation. So the constellation's not called Vega, okay? And oh, look, how to find Vega, a scintillating star in a cosmic harp. So that harp that's that harp at space.com. And it's supposed to represent Apollo's harp. So again, you see one of those ancient gods in the sky, and, it's, and that's Apollo's harp. Okay, and it's a stringed instrument. And um, let me see, does it look like a harp? Uh, does it look like a harp to me? Does it look like a harp to you? I don't know, to me it kind of, I have one of those cereal bowls that has a straw attached to it. So after you eat your cereal, you can drink your milk. That's what that looks like to me. Looks like the cereal bowl in the sky. But, you know, uh, ancient people didn't have those cereal bowls. So maybe that's why they call it the harp. So that's what I did. I searched for Vega Constellation because I said to myself, there's no Vega Constellation. Oh no, it's the harp. But then I started thinking, let me look up Vega because I don't know much about the star Vega. So here at space.com, this is what I found and I'm so excited about this. We've talked about travelers using the, the stars. We talked a little bit about it. Travelers using the stars to find their way home. And a lot of our stories, a lot of our tales and legends are about travelers using the North Star. And we know about that even with the Underground Railroad, right? They use the North Star to guide them. But look at this. Vega used to be the North Star. And then it will be again. Let's see when it was the North Star. Vega is a bright star located just 25 light years from Earth. And it's visible in the summer sky in the Northern Hemisphere, which is where we are. The star, uh, uh it look, it's part of the constellation, Lyra, um, with the stars Deneb and Altair. And they form an asterism known as the Summer Triangle. Do you know what an asterism is? I didn't know what an asterism is either. I had to look it up and I'm gonna show you what it is. <clears throat> so this star, Vega, is only about 450 million years old, which makes it younger than our solar system. And if you go to the next paragraph, it says, because the Earth's axis, you know that axis is tilted, which is why we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Because it wobbles, our perception of North gradually shifts to different stars over a 26,000 year cycle. So 26,000 years ago, Vega was the North Star. <clears throat> so it says Vega was the North Star several thousand years ago. And it will regain that status in about 12,000 years. So if you're here 12,000 years from now, you'll see that Vega is going to be our North Star. And it doesn't shift it. I mean, we have that, that wobbly uh, axis. It doesn't just say, okay, no, it just goes little by little by little by little, tiny bit. All right, so I didn't know what an asterism is, so what did I do? I Googled it, just like I tell you guys, look it up. What is an asterism? I know what an asterisk is, and it's that, um, uh, it's that shape, it's like the star shape, you know? But here's what an asterism is. It's a small pattern of stars 
much smaller than an official constellation. So an asterism is like a piece of a constellation. And that's when they said that asterism that had the three stars is part of, the, of Lyra. It's not all of the constellation, it's just a little part. So that's what an asterism is. It's like a mini subgroup. And we know about subgroups from math, right? It's a subgroup. So an asterism is a subgroup of a constellation. Well, I'm glad that we learned all those kind of wonderful stuff here. <clears throat> okay. So we have completed this activity. Let me, I have to get my close, close, close that. Thank you. All right, let's see what we have for some bonus sources here. Now, you don't have to do those bonus sources, but I know a lot of you have, have done every single bonus source you can find. And that makes me so excited for you. I am so happy for you because that means that you're gaining all this knowledge. Nobody expects anybody on this planet to know everything about everything. And, and that it's just like, I don't even know, I guess not even possible, maybe it is, I don't know. But you know what? I want you to at least look at things and explore things. And some people are not interested. I'm really not that interested in, in space exploration. I'm not. I'm more interested in learning about different cultures. And I know that Juzane was really excited about dinosaurs. She likes learning about things in history and about the past, you know? So, you know, space, not really that exciting. But, you know, there is a past, there is a history with space. We had something in the 50s called the space race. And we were, we were racing with other countries to try and get the first person out in space. Um, and that's when we, when we landed on the moon, we were the first ones on the moon. So that's a little bit about history. But then there's things, ancient history, about the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans who looked up at the stars and named those constellations. Now that's what's exciting because they have stories about their gods and those constellations kind of tie in the sky to their legends, to their, to their, their myths and, and to their, uh, their religions and things like that. So that's a really interesting part, which is why I love constellations because I love history. So Jose, maybe you might be interested in constellations and we're gonna do that tomorrow. All right, <clears throat> so here's the Milky Way galaxy. And we have, I mean, just a picture. There's really no questions. There's not a lot about it. If you're interested, what could you do? Yeah, you can, you can look it up. You can Google it. Night sky. A lot of people have been looking in the night sky recently because we've had a lot of exciting things happening. <clears throat> So we have a star-filled sky, starry skies. And you'll see that they, they've put a couple of these as like larger than others. So what could that be from? They could be closer to us or they could just be larger stars. Remember, we, we, we found out that if it's a new star, a young star, it's going to be very, very bright. And if it's a close star, it's going to be very, very big, right? And I think that's it. There's really not a lot of great bonus, uh, bonus content for this article, but that's okay because you can go and find such amazing things. I really like space.com. Space.com has some really cool stuff. And when I was looking for asterism, there's the National Schools Observatory. That looks like a good site that I might be interested in looking into. Uh, Merriam-Webster, that's a dictionary. Look, there's some videos about it. Earthsky.org, Britannica.com. All of these are great sites that you could navigate through and you could search for something particular or you could just explore. Well, that looks interesting, click. Oh, look, something else, click. Like what I did with Vega. I didn't know what an asterism is, but now that's in my head and I'm gonna be looking through my uh, telescope to find that asterism, or to find any kind of asterism. Um, I wonder if an asterism is, is like an official thing, like if it's the asterism, or if it's, if I could just call it an asterism. If I say, oh, look at those three stars, that's an asterism, I might have to look that up. Maybe they all have different names, like constellations. <gasps> I could make a map. Have you ever seen a constellation map? 
I could make an asterism app. Oh, that would be cool because I just learned about it. I want to learn everything I can about it. Oh, so excited. See, I'm starting to like space a little bit more. Well, they do it just cool. Guys, I'm, I'm 43 years old. I've never liked space, but working with you guys on space, I think you've inspired me. I'm really starting to really like it. So maybe this time next year, I won't be able to say I don't really like space anymore. Because I really kind of do. I think I can stop saying it now. Yeah, I'm going to stop. I kind of like learning about space. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye.